We've got a couple of more, but, um, but a really special work. And I'll, I'll try not get uh, too emotional when I talk about this work because I, I, I had a great conversation with Louisa the other day about it. And, um, and I, I had a lot of questions where I saw it came up, but um, it's a really beautiful work. We've talked a lot about sort of memory today and, and, and life and, and experiences. And this work um, really, uh, really encapsulates. Oh, sorry, a quick, a quick round okay. of applause for Louisa. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> An absolute stalwart here at, mm. at, at Hazelhurst. Uh, I'm known to you all, I'm sure. Mm. Um, Louisa, I'll, I'll come over and That's stand okay. with. I'll come over and stand with you and try and not be a big baby and get blabbery. Um, <laughs> we can be baby together. Yeah, I'm so, so you've all see me cry. <laughs> yeah, so an incredibly beautiful work, and I get. I guess um, there's no way around it. Let's let's talk about the story about um, you know how you came to make this incredible painting. Um, this painting was created, you've all, you all know how much COVID affected our lives. Um, Philippa got her brain tumour diagnosis uh, just before COVID just hit. It, that was a tragic event in itself because it affected the process of how she was going about her life and her connectivity to others, which was really important. Um, Philippa and I had a well, a brief but very strong friendship. We met at the Paddington Art Prize over a luncheon um, about almost seven years prior to this diagnosis. Um, she said to me that I think you came into my life because of this. Um, it's hard. Uh, I came into her life and I supported her till the very end. And um, when I wanted to paint her portrait, I wanted to do it in a real fragile way. It was painted during COVID, so it was paint, painted through a photograph, actually. Most people um, have kind of uh, said to me, you would have sworn it was painted from life because of the, the spiritual kind of um, fragmentation that was being translated through the image to the viewer. Um, there's a quote by um, John Singer, an artist, uh, John Sargent Singer, a uh, John Singer Sargent, I should say, that um, it's like uh, every time he painted a portrait, he lost a friend. In this case, I didn't lose a friend. I had, when she saw this portrait, she just cried on my shoulder. And uh, it was mostly a response to this bit of photo montage that was... Um, under her gown in the hospital. Um, I work with the subconscious a lot in my work, so I let my intuition guide me through every work that I do. So every portrait that I do is a deep reflection of myself, even through the sitter, not just the sitter in itself, but through me. So Philippa came, became my crystal ball to this portal of her, what she was experiencing, which was horrific. Uh, I cannot tell you um, when I would turn up at her house and see sometimes the state she would be in because she was trying to self-care and then I would take over from that. She had a family around as well, but it was just wearing everyone down really thin. Um, all that mattered to her while she was enduring this horrible illness was her eyesight, losing her eyesight. And as an artist, you, you, could, you can only just... I just could not imagine what it would be like not to see, let alone be able to ever hold a brush again, which was so important to her. She was an accomplished portrait painter, Archibald Prize hung, uh, she painted a portrait of Judy Kassab and her connection to Judy was uh, really important. Uh, two female artists, um, especially with so much historic uh, value in Australian art. She really valued women in the arts and her career was just starting to take off in these years that she got her tumour. Um, so when I saw the... We used to talk a lot through FaceTime um, during COVID, when I saw this photograph of her, I just had to paint her. And as I painted her, the fork she was eating with slowly became a paintbrush. I loved how it reinvented that painting was her staple. That was the thing that, um, that's the only thing she cared about, other than those that were closest to her. 
and that the drip took on, you know, paint in the form of, um, uh, like, her lifeblood. But it was, you know, and, and how everything is just kind of melting and ephemeral. But I think for me it was this element of photo montage that I added to the work because those of you that know an element of my practice actually involves, like, um, surrealist... Uh, practice with um, photo montage and mixed media and I just let things kind of evolve on their own. Well, I had this bird in my hand and I just took to it with a pair of scissors and cut it in half and I just slowly navigated across the canvas just to find whether it had a place and it just stopped there and I thought... I had an art teacher at school once say to me... Um, you know, sometimes you've just got to go with the first place you were going to stick it. Like, if it feels odd, just go with it. And that's where it landed and that's where it stayed. And then I realised this uncanny connection because I'd been visiting her studio for, for ages and realised that she had a little bird in her studio called Sky and it was her little alter ego and when she saw the painting, that's what broke her down because it became a metaphor for her mortality, for her, for her going to be... Like, you know, when you've got a bird, you cover it at night so, so that it knows it has to sleep. So it was her death, it was her freedom, her life, her creativity, all summed up in one little bird. So... But did you know about the bird... Before I didn't you, think about it. You didn't think about no, it, yeah, I didn't yeah. think about it. I didn't think to paint a portrait of Philippa with her bird from her studio. It was just a completely intuitive response that I just embraced. I mean, I can't imagine that portrait without the bird. Every time I look at it, I try and block it out, and I go, no, it's all about the, that bird and Philippa's experience and my experience. I think my spirituality, because I'm a very spiritual person... Um, I think my spirituality just came through just through that moment of realising that that bird was such an integral part of her and me. It was just part of both of us. And um, like I said, every time I paint a portrait, I look at it like any time I do a work of art, it's always a crystal ball to me. Nothing's a cut process, nothing's repeated too often. And um, I find it exhausting creatively because I'm always making a fresh start. It's not just a physical fresh start, a process, it's a fresh start. In this case, I had to teach myself how to use watercolour on canvas and I've had a lot of questions about the process and that. And that, that was really hard because, you know, um, it was significant in itself trying to retain the image on a surface that washes away. And the fact that it washed, wanted to wash away so many times because paper has a natural tendency to absorb and you can build stains into it without losing the complete image. With this, you could basically get a hose and wash it off. So I had to invent a way to sustain the paint to a degree, which um, took me time in itself working out the types of canvas and the quality of the medium and things like that um, because of the way I'm very experimental and, and a lot of you know I'm very... Um, uh, my practice is multidisciplinary, so I just embrace everything as the new, you know, you give me anything and I'll make something out of it. So for this process, I thought I have to do it. I can't do it in oils. I can't use terps, you know. And I had to do it with uh, the watercolour. And um, it was really an interesting experience. Even matching blues through the gown and it changed a lot. I just go with the flow I like the work to be an organic um, uh, evolution, a kind of culmination of my um, emotional responses because I'm, an, I'm a highly emotional person. Um, I get a lot of post... I've got a lot of post-traumatic stress in my body. Uh, it's how I deal with my art. It's very healing. I don't share that a lot with people, but it's uh, um, a big part of who I am. It's my... We have a parasitic life force, my art and I. We suck off each other. <laughs> and that's just how it is. So um, in this case, I thought that Philippa um, 
she was a perfect... Uh, I have to connect with the sitter. I can do portraits, I can sit, I can draw, but if I'm doing something, say, to, for an art prize, or I don't just choose anyone because they're a famous name, or I've got to have some connection or um, a catalytic resonance that's spiritual between me and the subject. Otherwise, the subconscious doesn't ignite, it doesn't lift, it doesn't do all those wonderful things that I like. It. So, hence, I think it's touched a lot of people. They've come up to me and some people have known Philippa and they think I've captured her lovely and some people who haven't known her feel they've known her, which is yeah. a real honour. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I knew Philippa and, and um, yeah, it, it is an extraordinary thing to behold. I think it's really interesting when you were talking about the sort of subconscious and the surreal, anyone who's had the misfortune of spending, you know, any period of time in a hospital, particularly like in intensive care, they are the most surreal of spaces and you really do start to sort of operate on this weird sort of half dreamlike state where you don't know what time it is, you, you know, you can't see the outside world. And you do go through this kind of weird period of, of reflection and kind of uh, dreams. And I think the portrait really captures the sort of the strangeness of that, where you're sort of broken down in the schmock. You, you know, you don't have your kind of individuality. Um, um, you're sort of part of a process or, or, or a part of a production line. And, and that's why these kind of elements of, of, of the implement of painting, the implement of, of joy and the bird are so fundamental. And that's one thing that's been really common to a lot of the talks today is, is, is painters talking about um, how fundamental the act of painting is to them, not just in terms of a creative output, but literally a, a life force, like what you're saying, like this, this kind of drip of the paint um, going out and that parasitic relationship. Well, yeah. actually, um, I, I, I've been so busy lately with overseas, like my career overseas, developing my career, back and forward and writing grants and <laughs> all the administration stuff artists do behind the scenes uh, other than pushing pain around. And when I was asked about a work for this show, I was really struggling because I thought, what have I got? <laughs> I've, got some, I've got a lot of work, but I want something fresh. And actually, she'd never been shown before, so I thought it was ideal. And then I thought of the theme about painter teacher and um, this idea about uh, how in the classroom, you know, in the room or the studio, atelier, whatever you want to call it, uh, this is where I have strong feelings about cross-pollinating as a, an educator and as an artist because, you know, you can't effectively teach unless you're exchanging ideas with the student. The teacher doesn't know everything. Sometimes I'm flattered that the, the, teacher, the students think I know everything. <laughs> I don't, um, and they they feel indebted to me for the knowledge I'm translating to giving them. Um, but in the terms of the theme for the show, that idea of cross pollinating and my friendship with Philippa, um, I think I wrote it in this in the actual statement that I felt it was a perfect um, a scenario, my relationship with her and the painting to translate how I feel towards my students when I'm teaching. Wow. Um, it's, it's a very powerful thing. I actually go home depleted sometimes because I give a lot of myself, and not just my knowledge, but a lot of me to the students and I go home tired. And I think when an artist is trying to support their practice through teaching, which is a deep passion of mine, I couldn't think of a better job to do. You know, I go home and sometimes my creativity is a bit more sparse than what it should be because... I'm exhausted from sharing that creative energy, yeah. that synergy I have with my students. So. But then sometimes your students inspire you and, and they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were saying the other day that, like, yeah. you know, sometimes the thing, you know, like, I mean, because you do know a lot, right? And, and But then every once in a while, you know, it's like that thing sometimes when you say something out loud, it makes you understand it more. And I think through that process of, of teaching, sometimes things about your, your own practice, your own life, um, um, come up so I, yeah. yeah I mean I had a student a, a, a kid the other day so I really enjoy teaching the kids as much as I teach the adults but she was saying to me how she's noticed that I she, she just doesn't get taught on um, you know what to do she gets taught on how to do it which was really nice to have that feedback from a 
seven-year-old kid, <laughs> you know. So, you know, that was really fulfilling. I never went home. I never forgot that when I went home. And I thought, and that little seven-year-old kid actually remembered that. That's yeah. what her father said. So, you know, I mean, she remembered that. And that meant a lot to me. So, yeah, I do get energised by stuff like that. It's just... Well, well, showing this particular work uh, uh, means a lot to us, and um, please, please join me in, in, in thanking Louisa. Yeah.